Hello, in this video I will be explaining how mastication or chewing can play a huge part in enhancing the function of our brains. That is because there is a large number of neural connections running from our mouth to our brain. Quite a significant part of our brain is dedicated to interpreting the somatosensory information and orchestrating the motor movements of our lips, mouth, tongue, and etc. The language and the brain. The language parts of our brain is strongly connected to our oral organs with which we speak. Our brains find the auditory information for spoken language by recording the sounds from our environment. Specifically, the brain associates different events, occurrences, and stimuli to sound. That's why when you show a child an apple and say its name, apple, immediately after, the child will now associate the physical apple with the auditory equivalent. So if you hold a couple of different fruits in front of a child and ask the child for the apple, the child will be able to differentiate the apple from the other fruit because he or she now knows the auditory physical association. So there is a very basic way of understanding how we human beings acquire uh, language. Through auditory stimuli associations, we can even think in terms of spoken language. In our mind, we may be able to he hear our own voice or others when we are thinking or reading a book. What we hear becomes a part of our mind, a part of our inner monologue. So although I may have gone off on a tangent, the question remains, what does mastication or chewing have to do with speech language and the brain in general? My point is that because our mouth has so many neural connections to different parts of our brain, mastication or chewing is one method available for activating some of those neural connections, thereby activating their associated brain regions. Through the activation of different brain regions, their functions can be enlisted or enhanced for particular cognitive tasks, or the stimulation of those brain regions indirectly enhances their function and structure. And if a part of the brain isn't stimulated enough, then logically you can expect that part of the brain to atrophy. Brain stimulation is the key to developing the brain. That's why you can find studies showing studious intellectual people having a high level of education have a lower risk for age-related dementia. So as the saying goes, you either use it or you lose it. A good example of brain stimulation is the black taxi cab drivers who have to memorize the complex maze-like city of London over the span of a few years. By stimulating the brain through memorization of different navigational paths, the brains of these taxi cab drivers slowly adapt to function more efficiently for path navigation and path memorization. Specifically, the posterior or the back end hippocampus develops and uh, grew in size. An interesting point is that, in return, the anterior or front end hippocampus became smaller. The anterior hippocampus has functions related to memorizing complex visuals. So by training one part of the brain, you may end up diminishing or neglecting another part of the brain. But my point is that the brain changes according to the stimuli that it receives. So the question remains, how does the brain change when stimulated through mastication or chewing? The effects of mastication and a lack thereof. Reduced mastication, for example with the Soylent diet, is actually a risk factor for dementia. On the flip side, chewing stimulates the brain in such a positive way that it even staves off dementia or the wasting away of the brain. Reduced mastication also reduces a person's spatial memory function. Likewise, increasing mastication improves a person's spatial memory. Note that the hippocampus is the part of the brain that mainly deals with spatial memory processing and encoding. So you can tell that if something affects the spatial memory function, then it affects the hippocampus. I believe that mastication improves the function and structure of the hippocampus. Specifically, reduced mastication leads to the structural and functional deterioration. In other words, hippocampal neurons waste away with reduced mastication. Aged animals or old human beings in their seniority are much more vulnerable to the negative effects of reduced mastication. Again, the opposite holds true that active mastication improves the state of the hippocampus and its neurons. One study showed a correlation where people with fewer remaining teeth had lower levels of cognitive function and a higher risk for acquiring dementia. The reason why this correlation exists is because our brain derives a lot of beneficial stimulation from the oral region of our body. And so, chewing is one action that provides that stimulation. But with a fewer number of teeth, one may conclude that mastication is decreased and likewise the beneficial brain stimulation is decreased. Research on aging and mastication have shown that a decrease in the number of teeth and the impairment of the jaw muscle activity due to aging causes a reduction in the sensory input activity to the central nervous system. 
Functional magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission topography revealed that mastication increases cortical blood flow and widely activates various cortical areas of the somatosensory, supplementary motor, and insular cortices, as well as the striatum, the thalamus, and the cerebellum. Chewing reduces stress. So mastication not only stimulates the brain directly through the neural connections in the mouth, but also positively affects the brain function indirectly through our endocrine autonomic systems. Specifically, active mastication has the ability to reduce a person's stress response. An exception is with abnormal mastication caused by occlusal disharmony, in other words, uh, severely misaligned teeth, that produces chronic stress, which in turn suppresses learning. But normal mastication reduces the level of corticosteroids in the blood circulation, thereby suppressing the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or the HPA axis, to contribute to preserving a person's cognitive function, because the truth is that stress disrupts the hippocampal function, and over time chronic stress damages the structure of the hippocampus, thereby making it harder for a person to learn. And so reducing stress such as with mastication is one way to improve learning and memory. Indeed, it is important to consider that stress is a major factor that harms the function and structure of the hippocampus, which is the brain center for learning, encoding new memories, and storing short-term memories. So one observation that you may notice is that people constantly under high amounts of stress suffer from reduced learning ability and impaired memory. So as a student, it is actually important to stay relaxed in order to excel academically. Chewing gum may be one method available for a student to stay calm and composed for efficient learning during a high stress load and the calming attribute of mastication may help explain why some people pursue the consumption of food when they are feeling stressed out or depressed mastication activates the brain I mentioned before that mastication can activate some of the neural connections coming from the mouth to the brain. Going in detail, active mastication increases the activation of the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex, which is the brain region essential for various different cognitive processes. I already mentioned that the hippocampus is responsible for learning and memory, essentially a central encoding site for the formation of new memories and where short-term memories are temporarily stored. The prefrontal cortex is the region of the brain that is responsible for executive function, which involves being able to differentiate between conflicting thoughts, determining what is good or bad, better and best, the same and different, the consequence of one's action, working towards a defined goal, being able to predict outcomes, having expectations based on actions, and being able to control oneself socially or behaviorally. I interpret that we may require the prefrontal cortex for our ability to analyze information and to be able to maintain focus on different tasks, as well as being able to filter and select certain pieces of information over others. I believe that the prefrontal cortex and perhaps most of the frontal lobe combines the information from different parts of the brain in order to help the person reach an in-depth understanding, find inspiration and derive new information using pre-existing information. So in theory, the activation of the prefrontal cortex through mastication would help help in these cognitive processes. And I personally find that masticating while studying or performing a cognitively demanding task, like blogging or writing an article, is very useful for enhancing focus, short-term memory, and comprehension. I would even go as far as to say that chewing increases my chances of finding inspiration, connections, or understanding the information that is not immediately apparent. It is interesting that such a simple action as chewing has such a mind-broadening, cognitive-enhancing effect. Although I should also mention that I mainly chew on frankincense, although there are many different varieties of frankincense, most of them offer medical and anti-inflammatory effects that can result in brain improvements in and of itself. But the best frankincense for mastication and the one that I use for chewing is from a tree called Boswellia freriana, which exudes a yellow-orange gum with white streaks or patches, sometimes running across its surface. This gum is also known as Maidi or Coptic frankincense. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!